صلى الله عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي يا أبا عبد الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لك الفداء سيدي يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء سيدي يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيم قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكر عبدنا أيوب إذ نادى ربه أني مسني الشيطان بنصب وعذاب اركض برجلك هذا مغتسل بارد وشراب ووهبنا له أهله ومثلهم معهم رحمة منا وذكرى لأولي الألباب وخذ بيدك ضغثا فاضرب به ولا تحنث إنا وجدناه صابرا نعم العبد إنه أواب صدق الله العلي العظيم We send the first of our loud salawat to the holy Imam Sayyid al-Shuhada Abi Abdullah al-Hussein Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad The second of our loudest salawat for the holy lady as Sayyid Zainab bint Amir al Mu'mineen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Ali Muhammad. The third of our loudest salawat for the protection and safety and the reappearance of our awaited Imam al Imam Sahib al Asri was Zaman. Allahumma. Tonight I wanted to concentrate on the one of the most important aspects and attributes of Lady Zainab Salamullahi Alayha as the beginning of the second ten nights of Muharram is usually allocated to this holy lady which inspires not only men and women but also inspires the whole of humanity with the patience with the way she dealt with the calamities and the problems that she faced after the martyrdom of her holy brother imam hussein alayhim assalam but before I do that, very quickly, I wanted to share some of the attributes that Imam Hussein alayhi salam shared with some of the previous prophets. We will do a quick comparison between the previous prophets, a selected number of prophets, and how they were tested how they dealt with issues in their lifetime 
and how Imam Hussein alayhi salam dealt with similar issues and for the fact that Imam Hussein was given a position higher than the position of the prophets. The first comparison, the first prophet we will compare with Imam Hussein alayhi salam is Prophet Idris. In the Holy Quran it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wadhkur fil kitab Idris, innahu kana siddiqan nabiyya. Prophet Idris lived in a time of a, a ruler, a tyrant, a king which oppressed people. And the nature of prophets, the nature of messengers when they are sent to a nation, they are sent to change. They are sent to a community, to a society where it's full of corruption, either corruption from akhlaq or corruption in ethics or morals or corruption in their religion, in the way they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of religion and faith. Here, Prophet Idris was doing his work, was doing his job. It doesn't matter who he teaches and who he guides towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's a poor person, if it's a merchant, if it's a baker, if it's an ironmonger, if it's someone who works in a farm, if even it is someone who is a king or a high-ranked political individual. The Prophet came he also spoke to this king, this ruler who lived in his time. This ruler didn't like what the prophet was inviting him to, so he decided to kill him and get rid of him. Prophet Idris, because of his tabligh, because of his uh, enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, al-amri bil ma'ruf wa nahi anil munkar, this king wanted to get rid of him. So Prophet Idris decided to move away, to flee. Here, the comparison we compare between Prophet Idris and every single one of these prophets, if I wanted to speak, I need hours and hours. But very quickly, is just a starting point for myself and my brothers and sisters in the Majlis to go and start reading about the history of our prophets. We need to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent and where and why and what they did and how they lived and how they died. So this prophet, Prophet Idris, decided to move away from that location that he was in to save his life. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he also done amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi an munkar. He decided to move away. He would say, okay, Imam Hussein moved away. Why didn't he stay in Medina? Why didn't he stay in Mecca? Why did he move away, go towards Iraq? Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the reason that made him leave Medina or Mecca is because these two holy cities are holy cities and they have high position in Islam. They have a specific hurma, the holy burial site of Rasulullah and the, how, the holy house of Allah in Mecca are holy places. There should not be any fights. There should not be any bloodshed in, the, in those uh, locations to preserve the sanctity and the holiness of the place. Imam Hussein alayhi salam wanted to protect the sanctity of Baytullah al-Haram. That's why he moved away. Imam Hussein used to live in Medina, used to live in Mecca. There was no reason for Imam Hussein to leave unless there was people threatening him to, to be killed and for his blood to be shed. So Imam Hussein, the, whole, the only reason he moved away was not because he was afraid, was not because he was scared, Imam Hussein is the son of Ali, Amir al muminin the strongest man in that time from the beginning until the end. Imam Hussein merely left because he didn't want his, his blood shed and the blood of his family to be shed in that part of the world. So the comparison is that Prophet Idris moved away to protect his life, even if it meant for Amr bil Ma'ruf, wa nahi an al munkar. But Imam Hussein moved away to protect the sanctity and to sacrifice himself and his life for the sake of Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Ibrahim, alaykum salam Prophet Ibrahim, he brought his wife and his little son. He says in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Rabbana, inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar inda baytika al-muharram faj'al af'idatan min al-nas tahwi ilayhim warzuqhum min al-thamarat O Lord, O Allah, I have brought my wife and my son and I have left them in a desert fi wadin ghayri dhi zar there is no vegetation and there is no water. Now you, you, you would ask me why did the Prophet of Allah bring his wife and his little son, newborn son, and leave them in the middle of the desert and go back? Because that was an imtihan. Prophets of Allah are continuously tested. Allah wanted to see, O oh Ibrahim, after many years you have grown old, you have remarried, because you didn't have any offspring. Now I have given you a child. Are you going to listen to me or not? Go to Mecca. Leave your wife and your son there. I will protect them. It is difficult, brothers and sisters, for a family to be separated, for a wife and her newborn child to live in a place where there is no vegetation, no water, no one living next to them to help them and protect them. Usually, when a mother gives birth to her child, they provide her with every possible means so she doesn't have to need anyone. Prophet Ibrahim took his wife, Hajar, and her, his son Ismail, and left them in Mecca. Mecca in those days was not as Mecca today. It was just a desert. The Holy Ayah says, Inni askantu min dhurriyati of my offspring. Biwadin ghayri dhi zar inda baytika al-muharram. O Lord, protect them. Get people to come and protect them and be attracted towards them. Warzuqhum min al-thamarat. Here, Prophet Ibrahim left his family, okay, in the desert. What is the comparison between Prophet Ibrahim and Imam Hussein and his family is that Prophet Ibrahim, there was... Okay, there was no food and water, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as sign of a miracle, when Prophet Ismail, when he was young, he moved, his mother was looking for water. Seven times she went between the mountains of Safa and Marwa, looking for water for this child. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to give them water. How? Prophet Ismail moved his feet, and from under his feet, water started coming out. Mu'jizah. A miracle. That's why it's called Zamzam. Because her, his mother, from far away, she started seeing water coming from under this baby. She started saying, Zam, Zam, be careful, move away. That's why they called it Zamzam. Why wasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala been able to give water to the children of Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura? Do we not believe that Imam Hussein, his position and his rank, is higher than the previous prophets, excluding the Holy Prophet of Islam. I will narrate to you this narration. Sayyida Sukaina on the night of Ashura came and said to her father, Oh father, I can't take it anymore. I am too thirsty. You are an Imam. You represent Allah. You have powers. You are able to bring me water whenever I want. I want water now. Imam Hussein said, okay, come with me behind the tents. Imam Hussein alayhi salam pointed or dug his sword in the earth, water started coming out. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, if he wanted to be victorious upon the army of Ibn Sa'ad, he was able to become victorious. And there was no need of him being killed, his companions being killed and beheaded, his family being taken as captives. The Malaika, thousands on the day of Ashura, on the night of Ashura, came down upon Imam Hussein telling him, Oh Imam, we are at your service. The same way Malaika came down in the battle of Badr. They came down upon the Holy Prophet. And they said, Oh Prophet of Allah, we are at your service. Allah has sent us to help you and protect you. 
And they were able to fight between the hands of the Holy Prophet and the figures of Muslims, of normal men. Quraysh, when they were fighting the Holy Prophet in Badr, they thought that these men fighting them were normal men from Mecca and from Medina. But in fact, they were angels and the figure of men. Imam Hussein, he was able to take the offer of the Malaika. But he said, no, leave everything as it is. This is the imtihan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave it as it is. He said to her, O oh, daughter, Sukaina, drink. But daughter, know that if you drink from this water, your thirst will be quenched. But who will become thirsty? Our Shia, our followers are going to become thirsty on the day of Qiyamah. So Sayyidah Sukaina never drank water. Imam Hussein's family left in the middle of the desert with no water, with no food, similar to the wife of Prophet Ibrahim. But Prophet Ibrahim's family did not have, to the lowest of narrations, 30,000 army men equipped with the swords and daggers and knives and all the arrows and spears surrounding them from every angle Hajar and Ismail did not have their tents burnt they were not slapped the daughters of Imam Hussein had their tents burnt they were slapped they were beaten on the day of Ashura a little daughter of Imam Hussein was wearing earrings one of the enemies came, he wanted to steal the earrings from the air of this little girl. How do you think he took the earrings? Do you think he stood her, he started slowly taking the earrings out of her ear? No. He came, he pulled the earrings out of this girl's ear. Which caused the ear to be ripped. And she started bleeding. This is a comparison between the family of Prophet Ibrahim and Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura. And still they were patient. Still Imam Hussein told them to be patient. Patience is very important for any movement or any objective to become successful. If Lady Zainab was not successful from the day of Ashura until they went to Sham, the whole movement of Imam Hussein would have been demolished. And Nabi Salih, Prophet Salih, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the nation of Prophet Salih with the camel, with the naqa. Allahumma, this is what Imam Hussein says, I'll come back to it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asked, by Prophet Salih, he said to Allah, these people are asking for a mu'jizah so they can believe in you. Okay, what do they want? He said to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are asking me to ask you to bring from the middle of a mountain a camel. A camel is usually born from its mother. But they asked, we want your God, your Lord, to bring out of this mountain, this huge mountain, we want a camel to come out of it. And not only that, we want that camel to be pregnant. And we want it to have a specific color. Okay. A little bit went past, time went past, and then they started hearing rumbling noise and a loud noise. And then a camel, a pregnant camel came out of the mountain. Prophet Saleh told them, this is an imtihan for you. They said, what is it? They said, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, now that you have requested a miracle, I have given you what you want. But your imtihan is that this camel needs to drink water one whole day, and you don't take water from that river. And then you take water and whatever you need the second day. So every day, all, every one day the camel drinks and the next day you take water they said okay 
Days went past. They had vegetation. They had land that they needed to give water to. They couldn't take it. So they came and they killed that camel, which made them fail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them three days after that. Allah brought down adab upon them because they failed their imtihan. Now Imam Hussein, on the day of Ashura, he had his six-month-old baby on his arms. He came out and he said to them, give me some water. The nation of Prophet Salih, they had water. They were able to drink water every one other day. They were not deprived of water. Imam Hussein, he was deprived of water. And not only that, they did not even give water to his baby. They killed his baby. Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish Bani Umayyah and the army of Ibn Sa'ad there and there? This is a test for Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein raised his hand after his son was killed. He said, Allahumma la yakunu tifli hadha ahwan alayk min fasili naqati salih. You tested the nation of Prophet Salih and then you brought down Adab after three days. You destroyed them for disobeying you. Is my six month old baby less than the camel of Qom Salih? But this was a test of imtihan, test of patience. Next, Prophet Nuh. Prophet Nuh was the Shaykh of the Prophets. He was the eldest of the, in age, the oldest prophet that lived. Imam Hussein was Sayyid Shabab Ahlul Jannah, the master of the youth of the paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala graced his house where he lived and the masjid that he stayed in for Prophet Nuh, which is Masjid al Kufa. Prophet Nuh lived and prayed and worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Iraq, in Kufa, Masjid al Kufa today was not built at the time of Imam Ali, was available from the time of Prophet Nuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala graced the land of Karbala for Imam Hussein because Imam Hussein sacrificed himself for the Islam. The Holy Prophet, Prophet Nuh, was the person in charge of saving the Mu'mineen and got them to go on boats on the ark. Safinat Nuh, he saved them, he protected them from the tides and from the flood and from the water in the sea. Imam Hussein, he himself is the ark of salvation. Imam al-Rada alayhi salam says, Kulluna sufunun najat, walakin safinatul Husseini awsa' wa fi lujajil bihari asra' Imam Hussein. He is also, we are all arcs of salvation. This is Imam Rida saying, our eighth Imam. We are all arcs of salvation. But Imam Hussein, our grandfather, Jaddun al Hussein, he is also an ark of salvation. But the ark of Imam Hussein is wider. And in the middle of the sea, in the middle of the fierce tides, his ark is faster. What does this teach us? This teaches us that once you are attributed, you link yourself with Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you do not need to fear. As long as you have Iman and faith and patience, and you follow Imam Hussein's footsteps, and you learn from his university, and you implement his teachings, you do not need to fear. Whatever problem hits you, whatever difficulty you face, you do not need to worry. As Imam Rada says, his ark is wider. He can receive as much people as possible. He will never say to you, go. He will always let you go on board his ark. And he, his ark is faster. And Nabi Shu'aib, Prophet Shu'aib, had two daughters. Now his daughters, they were irresponsible for bringing water. They came, there was one well in that part of 
the city. They came, they noticed that there are a group of herd shepherds. They were trying to get water for their animals. They stayed aside. Prophet Musa came to Median from Egypt. He was running away from the oppression of the Pharaoh. He wanted to save his life. He came, he traveled for many hours and many days until he arrived at Median. He was thirsty, he was hungry, he wasn't able to continue, so he slept under a palm tree. When he woke up, he saw these two ladies standing aside. They were carrying containers that they wanted to take water in, but they didn't go. He came and asked them, Ma khatbukuma? Why are you standing aside? They explained to him, we want to get water, and these people are standing there. They're men, we can't. This is also a message to some of our sisters and those who will listen later on when you see a location even if you have something to do in that location you have a school university job when you see men standing around don't go and participate in a conversation and stand amongst them we are taught by the daughters of prophet shuaib they stood aside they waited until they went. Prophet Musa offered, they told him, we can't go until these people go away. Prophet Musa thought, okay, do, do you not have brothers? Do you not have a father? Why are you coming to take water? They quickly told him, وَأَبُونَا شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ oh, عجوز. Our father is an old man. He can't come and take water. So he offered to help them. He brought them water. They took the water home. They explained to their father, there is a man, he helped us. He's got good akhlaq, he has good attributes. So he sent one of the daughters to go and call him. They called Prophet Musa. He came, he met Prophet Shu'aib, and eventually he got married to one of his daughters and was employed by Prophet Shu'aib. And he lived there. Here, Prophet Imam Hussein alayhi salam was able to do the same thing. Allah provided the help and assistance for the daughters of Shu'aib. He provided Prophet Musa to help them. But the sister of Imam Hussein in the afternoon of Ashura, not only she didn't have anyone to help her and protect her, but there were people hitting Sayyida Zainab on the day of Ashura. These are all similarities. Allah protected his prophets provided everything for his prophets but wanted to say to them look there will be a grandson of one of my prophets who will be sacrificed who i will be able to provide everything i am providing for you but for the sake of islam he remained patient i know definitely i won't be able to conclude my topic i wanted to speak about sabr but inshallah i will try to con conclude if i can on another occasion and Nabi Ayyub I will narrate to you this story and inshallah conclude very quickly Prophet Ayyub have you not heard of Sabr Ayyub the patience of Ayyub Prophet Ayyub is known for his patience Prophet Ayyub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him everything he wanted he had thousands of sheep he had thousands of cows he had thousands of camels he had lots of gardens lots of vegetation lots of land he had lots of employees working for him he had lots of sons and daughters he was a handsome young man he had good health he had a beautiful wife he had lots of food lots of money lots of wealth but again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him and tested the people that lived around him. Shaytan came and started doing waswasa. He started speaking negatively as this is his job. Now I am narrating the, to you the story, but pick points where you can implement in your life. Learn of the patience of this prophet. Prophet Ayyub, people came to him. People, uh, Shaitan went to the people that lived around Prophet Ayyub. Prophet Ayyub used to open his doors for everyone, provide them with food, 
feed them, give them money, because Allah had given him. He didn't refrain from giving them water, from giving them food, wealth. He helped them, the poor people. Every day, he used to not to eat unless a poor person used to sit with him and eat. Shaitan came. O oh, people of Prophet Ayyub, do you know why Allah is giving him so much money and so much wealth and he is looking after him? Do you know why Prophet, uh, Prophet Ayyub is worshipping Allah? Because he wants all of these things to be given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah stopped giving Ayyub all of these kind of stuff, he would not worship Allah. He would stop worshipping him. So people started doing hearsay. They started speaking behind Prophet Ayyub. Now Allah wanted to start testing Prophet Ayyub, but also testing the people. So the test started. One day, one of the employees of Prophet Ayyub came to him. He, started, he was shouting, Oh master, help. Prophet Ayyub came out. What's happened? He said to them, to Prophet Ayyub, the employee, he said a group of people came, they killed all your employees, and they stole all your animals. <coughs> Prophet Ayyub raised his head and said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un. He remained patient. The next day, another employee came shouting, screaming, Prophet Ayyub, help! He looked at him. Prophet Ayyub looked at this man. He saw him, all of his clothes were burnt and he smelt of smoke. What happened? He said to him, a lightning came, struck the land, struck the trees, and the whole of the land got burnt. That was the second day. Again, he remained patient. The third day, his sons and daughters, they were sitting down eating food. Suddenly, the roof of that room, that house collapsed and they were all buried. They all died. What more needs to happen until someone gives up? He lost all his wealth. His land was burnt. His sons and daughters were killed. But still, he was patient. Days went past. He started becoming ill. His health deteriorated. He told his employees, go, look for something else. Go and work somewhere else. No land, no animals, no wealth, no sons and daughters, no children. His health started deteriorating. But who remained next to him? His lawful wife. This is a message to our wives, our mothers and our sisters. She remained next to her husband she remained lawful she was tested also <coughs> this was a test all of everything was taken from them wealth money health children if a man can stay strong a mother will not be able to pro to protect her emotions she will easily give up but she took sabr from her husband she took patience from her husband was that it? No. They became really poor. Shaitan went back to the people of Prophet Ayyub. He told them, Allah brought down adab. Prophet Ayyub must have done something that Allah is punishing him. His presence amongst you is danger. He has to leave. Kick him out of your city. People started coming to Prophet Ayyub and telling him, you must leave. You are not allowed to live amongst us. Prophet Ayyub used to help them. He used to provide them with food, wealth, money. He used to get them to work in his fields. But this is what happens. If you see someone who was wealthy, who was rich, who was providing you with service, and suddenly one day you woke up and you saw him poor, provide him with help and assistance. Don't stab him in the back and tell him you must leave. And don't speak to him and neglect him so they kicked him out of his home He's, he lived in the middle of the, de the desert no one helped him no one provided him with food his wife went out to start looking for work 
to work as a maid in people's houses so she is able to bring back some bread. Her husband was ill. He was not able to work. She built him a little cover in the middle of the desert so the heat would, she would protect him from the heat of the sun and the cold of the night. She didn't find work. She knew she was the wife of Prophet Ayyub. They didn't employ her. At those days, she was so beautiful. She had long hair. She went to some narrations. She went and sold her hair to a man so she would be able to get some money to buy some bread. Another narration says that Prophet Ayyub was so upset because she done that. Because those days, a sign of a, of a lady or a woman committing haram, committing adultery, was that they would shave her hair off of head. She, they would cut her hair. And she had done that. And Prophet Ayyub couldn't take it anymore. He raised his hands. And he said, Oh Allah, this is the work of shaitan. He has affected me so much, but, but I have remained patient. The story is well explained in the Holy Quran. And I will give you the name. It is Surah Sa'd. And the holy story is also been narrated in um, Surah as sajda where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, about Prophet, Ibrah, uh, Prophet Ayyub. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Holy Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal-asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haq, wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Patience. The only thing that will make you survive the difficulties of life. They were patient. After Prophet Ayyub praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, years passed and they were in that situation. But Allah, because of his patience, because of him remaining faithful and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because some people, when they are tested, when Allah deprives them of their money and wealth and of their health, Allah takes something away from them, they go against Allah. They think Allah is against them. This is an imtihan, brothers and sisters. So because he remained patient, and patience is the key. As-sabr, miftahun, faraj. Allah will open doors once he sees you, you have been patient. Allah said to him, Allah brought down an angel, his wife wasn't next to him. She was looking for food. In the middle of the desert, he suddenly noticed light came down from the sky and a nice smell was covering all the space. This angel came, said to him, O Prophet of Allah, Allah has accepted your dua. Hit your feet to the ground. A well will be uncovered. Water will start coming out. Wash in that well or your physical illnesses will go away. And they brought him clothes from the paradise. He covered himself. His health became better. He went back to how he was a handsome young man. His wife came back. She noticed a man is sitting in the, in the place of her husband. She said to him, have you not seen my husband, Ayyub? He told her, I am Ayyub. She said to him, Ayyub, my husband is old, frail, weak. He was ill. He had lots of illnesses. How come? He told her, because of your patience, because of we being steadfast in our iman and faith and belief, Allah has rewarded us. Allah rewarded them. She also washed. Allah returned her beauty and her youth, gave her children, sons and daughters, the land, the wealth came back, and they lived happily after that but say the Zainab on the day of Ashura spent the night of the 11th all alone there was no Abbas 
ذا واز نو علي الاكبر نو قاسم no one to help and protect her but there were people chanting and cursing her father Amir al muminin on the morning of the 12th of Muharram they brought the camels without any seats without any covers and they got the women and the children to go up on these camels and to get ready to go to Kufa they wanted to raise the women and get them to go and ride the camels. Sayyidah Zainab told them, no, don't touch anyone. I will raise the women and I will place the children on these camels. She started helping one by one, the mother of Qasim, the mother of Ali al-Akbar, her sister, Umm Kulthum, Ruqayya, Sukayna, even Imam Zain al-Abideen, she helped. She remained the last one. Who is going to help her? Who is going to help her go on top of this camel? She looked around. She faced towards the river of Furad. She started saying, Brother Abbas, you was the one that helped me on my camel. When I was leaving Medina, where are you now? Come and help me. أنا رايح العباس جعدايا I am going to Abbas because he is the only one which will be able to help me now Lady Zainab was able to go on top of the camel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped her to go on top of the camel. Now they started going towards Kufa. She said, oh, Ya Jamal, oh, you the one who is going to take us to Kufa. Take us one final time. Let us see the bodies. Let us say farewell to Imam Hussein. Amrur bina ala adsadi ikhwatina wa a'azzatina. Once Lady Zainab became close to the body of Imam Hussein. She was just about to throw herself on top of the body of Imam Hussein. Imam Zain al-Abideen faced her said, Abma Zainab, look at me. I am powerless. I have no health. I cannot help you if you fall. Bid farewell to your brother for, on top of the camel. Let go. عني سافرت ما ودعوني don't say that I have left you without saying goodbyes, oh brother Hussein. Don't say I have gone and left you all alone. Oh brother Hussein, if I was able to stay next to you, even if the animals of these deserts will eat from my skin, I would stay next to you, oh brother Hussein. But as you can see, the enemies of Allah are forcing us to go towards Kufa. Let go. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم العز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ثبت قلوبنا على ولاية ومحبة محمد وآل محمد يا الله ثبت قلوبنا على البراءة بالأعداء محمد وآل محمد يا الله اللهم ارزقنا زيارة محمد وآل محمد وخصوصا سيد الشهداء أبي عبد الله الحسين في الدنيا وشفاعتهم في الآخرة يا الله اللهم عجل في فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه We have been asked to recite the holy ayah for شفاء المرضى تعجيل for the reappearance of our awaited Imam لقضاء الحوائج نقرأ الآية الكريمة خمس مرات بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن يجيب in the riwayah and the narration it is stated oh abd oh servant if you want me to 
give you your Hajj, raise your hands and with the loudest of your voices, Amman Yujibul. Amman Yujibul. أما يجيب أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله اللهم بالسيد الجليل الغريب زينب الكبرى اقضي حوائج المحتاجين شافي مرضى المؤمنين لا سيما المرضى المنظورين من سألون الدعاء اللهم ألبسهم ثوب الصحة والعافية عاجلا غير آجل يا الله اللهم أدي دينا كل مدين اللهم ارجع مسافرينا إلى أوطانهم سالمين غانمين يا الله وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ومن مات من أهل هذا الجمع ومن مات من شيعة أمير المؤمنين خدمة الحسين أرواح الباذلين للطعام الخدمة the servants of Imam Hussein who served during these nights the majalis of Imam Hussein wherever they are especially in this holy house of Imam Hussein oh Allah protect them and guide them and take their hands towards success Ya Rabbal Alameen Wa ila arwaah al-mu'minin wal-mu'minat Siyama arwaah al-ulamai wal-shuhada Wa khadamati al-Husayn Siyama Ayat Allah al-Azma al-Sayyid Muhammad al-Husayn al-Shirazi Wa najlihi al-Muqaddas al-Sayyid Muhammad Rida al-Shirazi Wa jami' al-Shuhada Rahimallahu man ba'atha lahum thawab surat al-Mubarakat al-Fatiha al-Ba'as salawat